Okie dokie. So I think it, we're starting to record now. Amani looks like she's still having a few challenges. I'll just give her a couple of moments. I'd put my camera on, but I can't work out how to do it. Oh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how my, my wife's done the settings here and I can't, can't get the picture off. It's okay, mate. As long as you can see the slideshow, that's all that matters. Yeah, I can see. Yep, perfect. All right, so we might get started and anyone who comes along will admit them as they go. Um, so firstly, I'll introduce myself. I'm Cathy. I'm the director of the kindergarten. Um, thank you so much for making the time this evening um, to have a quick chat about your beginning journey at Condi Park. Um, I've got my four lovely teachers sitting behind me, <laughs> which I'm sure most of you can see. Hang on, which way do I go? Uh, <laughs> um, so we're going to have a bit of a chat about that curriculum decision making what you'll see at Condi, um, and also what you won't see at Condi, because that's just as important as well. Okay, so let's get started. So I think this next quote is, uh, sums up our kindergarten pretty well, if it's going to turn up. <laughs> of course, it's when I record that it won't work. Um, there we go. So as Sue Larkey says, if a child cannot learn the way we teach, then maybe we should teach the way that the child can learn. So that's really, in essence, the foundation of everything that we do at Condi Park. Before we go too much further, we'll pay our respects to the Bachelor Nation. And this is our acknowledgement that uh, we use throughout our kindergarten alongside our children. My heart acknowledges the Bachelor people and the land in which we stand. My eyes want me to be mindful and explore. My ears help me to listen to others and the world around me. My nose helps me to breathe in, calm down, and think. My mouth helps me to share my ideas, to laugh, and to sing. My hands help me to discover, create, and to learn. My feet connect me to my land and my heart helps me to welcome, to acknowledge, and to grow. So welcome to Condi Park. So this is your family. So, so for some families, they're returning with their second or third or uh, yesterday their fourth child. Um, it's also um, perhaps your first step into uh, the realm of kindergarten for your child. So it's a chance for your families to build a real connection with us. We welcome you into our service at any time. And it's time to embrace that potential of your child. Every single child is incredibly confident and incredibly capable. And uh, as a group of teachers, we feel very privileged um, that you place your trust in us to see them grow. So our team at Condi is pretty large. Uh, we have a lot of team members who work part-time across the service because it supports their own family's needs. Um, and I'm actually missing a couple of photos there. So those poor team members, I do say sorry to. Uh, but that's most of us sitting here um, today. So before we go too much further into what the curriculum is at Condi, we're going to have a look at why we teach in the way that we teach. And the foundation to that for er all early childhood services is informed by what we call the AEDC, so data. So that data is collected every three years and it's collected in prep. The next lot of data collection is actually next year. So that's where we start to see a snapshot across five developmental domains um, to look at how children are progressing um, and also how they're progressing both nationally, state and then locally. So if you ever want to have a look at that data, you can actually drill down and look at your suburb 
Um, and then you can go a little bit further to Harvey Bay and then you can go wider to Fraser Coast. It's, it's I, I like data, I don't know, I know I'm strange. Um, <laughs> but it's, it is really interesting and it informs us as teachers uh, in how our environments should look and also how we should be teaching and what we should be focusing on too. So you'll see for Harvey Bay, we're in those blue bars. We're actually not doing that great uh, with the last data collection. We actually have the higher, one of the highest rates of being vulnerable in one area and also quite vulnerable in two or more areas. In particular, it's physical development, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, we've got some of the most beautiful environments outside, but we are seeing that children physically, that their development is not quite on par and that they're really being challenged physically to move within their spaces uh, for Harvey Bay. And then the next highest vulnerable one is sort of between social and communication. So we've known for quite some time that Harvey Bay um, and indeed the Fraser Coast has quite a high level of uh, complex needs for communication. Um, and that's where that social fits because they, they work so closely together. So those indicators there do inform our teaching practice but they're not the only thing that informs our teaching practice, but it's certainly a foundation there. At Condi Park, we use the Queensland Kindergarten Learning Guidelines. That's our curriculum framework. So as you would already know, all our teachers are degree qualified. So we're all qualified to teach up to grade three. Many of our educators actually have a teaching degree as well. Um, and then most of our educators all have a diploma level as well. Um, and then I've got my master's degree as long as Gillian for um, in education, educational leadership. So the Queensland Kindergarten Learning Guidelines are informed by that triangle looking one down the bottom there, which is the national curriculum of early years learning framework. So the curriculum is there to fit around your child. We don't believe that the child has to fit around the curriculum. That particular curriculum document of the QKLG is beautiful. It, it really captures the elements um, of child development, especially in those three to five years. And when we're writing observations, when we're writing goals alongside you for your, for your child next year, and um, that's the language that we'll start to be using. Um, and then by this time of the year where the teachers are writing transition statements that will go off to your child's prep teacher to inform them um, of how best to support the needs of your child. So we're really fortunate, Condi, that we tend to feed to pretty much all the schools across Harvey Bay, because um, we're quite central, both state and private. Um, but how we write our transition statements and the language that we use in our, our observations informs those prep teachers in how to support their needs. So at Condi Park, we utilise a number of different researchers and philosophical practices that also inform our teaching practice. So the first one is very much Reggio Emilia. So we've changed our practice a little bit at Condi Park. If you're returning here, it's going to look and feel a little bit different. We're also really fortunate that we get to work with some specialists as well who are part of our teaching team. So we have a paediatric occupational therapist um, who's going to come in one day every week and not work specifically with children, but she's there to work across our whole service to look at how we're best supporting the needs of all our children, but to support our team, our teaching team as well. And then we also have a qualified early childhood teacher who has just completed her master's degree in STEM. So STEM is science, technology, engineering and maths. And she's there to support us also in ensuring that those curriculum decision-making um, experiences that we provide include that STEM aspect. So for Reggio Emilia and how that influences us, there's 12 guiding principles. 
that children are active protagonists of their own learning. So they're in charge, they make decisions. Your children come to us with a huge wealth of knowledge and understanding. And it's our job as teachers to understand and build that relationship first and foremost. And that informs then what your child already knows and how we're going to extend their learning. The 100 languages is a summary of that children communicate in a hundred different ways and even more so. The participation, the strategy of being together. So that's why we've changed our practice slightly. We're a community unto itself in Condi Park. Um, so when you join us, you're part of our Condi Park family and how we work together um, has the best outcomes for your child. Listening is so, so important. We spend 90% of our day just listening and ensuring that we really understand that individual child. When we're planning and we're developing um, teaching strategies and activities for our children, it has to come from a place of listening first. We have to know our children really well. Learning, as you would recognise, is a process of individual and group construction. So some people like to learn in small groups, individually. Um, other people learn really well when it's in a, a big group. So at Condi, we're actually developing workshops. So children come and sign into workshops and they have the opportunity to work and learn specific skills in groups of four, six, tiny groups where we have the opportunity to work one-to-one -one, and they happen throughout the day. Educational research is a cornerstone to all that we do. We cannot um, make informed decisions without ensuring that we engage in research. So we run our own research projects sometimes, sometimes in collaboration with universities uh, and sometimes with other early childhood services. Documentation happens constantly. When you come into the service, it will be around you <laughs> everywhere you look. So it can feel a little overwhelming at first, especially as a mum or a dad coming first time into that service. <coughs> so we encourage you to take the time, have a chat to your teachers. They'll let you know in each of the rooms where that documentation uh, portfolio is, which is quite a large A3 booklet. And then every single child has their own portfolio, which they own. They decide what goes in there. The teachers put their individual learning in there. And we encourage you to be part of that learning journey as well. Organisation and shared responsibilities. So shared responsibilities is something that comes up constantly within our service. We give our children a lot of responsibility, be it from choosing when to eat, to being responsible for your own backpack when you go to Beach Kindy. So I'm not going to pick it up for you. Your teacher's not going to pick it up for you. You're responsible for picking that up and carrying that with you. We'll help you, but at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. And we all share a responsibility to each other, to take care of each other, to support each other and to encourage each other. Children are also engaged in that planning, design, teaching and the environment. The environment and our spaces at Condi are really quite different. They are challenging. Occupational therapists in particular love our spaces because there's lots of levels, there's lots of stepping, there's lots of um, opportunities for children to test their skills. Um, and we engage our children in writing their risk assessments on how to keep safe, but how to keep each other safe as well. And professional development. Even though we're qualified early childhood teachers, we can't maintain that level of professionalism if we don't teach ourselves continuously as well. So all our team engage in professional development on an ongoing basis. And then finally, there's always an assessment component. So your children at Condi, um, we don't sit there with a checklist and, and tick off what they can do. What we do do is listen and have that conversation and look at what they're knowledge is and how that knowledge has developed over a period of time. That's what informs our assessment components for teaching. 
Our program is also informed by the work of Montessori and Gardner as well. So Montessori has been around for quite some time. Uh, it focuses on the individual interests of those children that we've talked about. It talks about identifying all those particular needs that children have and the importance of daily living skills, those foundations, so caring for the environment, caring for yourself as an individual and caring for others within our community. So that sense of community is very strong. And then Gardner talks about those multiple intelligences, your linguistic intelligence, your logical, mathical, so that's more your intellectual intelligence musical intelligence, your kinesthetic, so how your body moves, your spatial intelligence, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and of course your naturalistic intelligence as well. So those sort of inform our philosophy and how we teach. So what does that actually look like now that I've used all those um, confusing terms? <laughs> so our mission statement at Condi is that we are a centre of excellence, a place that's embedded in the heart of the Harvey Bay community. Our team is committed to ensuring each individual child and family is supported and most importantly acknowledged. That each child develops a sense of belonging and connection in our space and that all their relationships are valued. Even those relationships that don't go well sometimes, they're still valued. Allowing children to develop at their own pace Play is essential through exploration and appreciation of natural environments in a place that values that risk benefit approach towards learning. Condi Park embodies the Harvey Bay community and all who have spent time with us. So risk benefit sometimes makes people a little nervous. So what it actually means is that our children can climb trees. We have children who will stand on top of our monkey bars and dance. <laughs> we'll have children um, that will climb some of the really high posts. However, we won't lift our children. So if your body is not ready to get there, that's your body's way of saying it's not safe yet. And then once they're ready to start to climb, then we talk about, okay, how are we going to keep each other safe? What are we going to do to help each other? So that's why we don't lift. Our philosophy statement is also in your handbooks that many of you have already received. Um, so I'm not going to read through all that. Uh, but that philosophy statement is continuously re reflected upon, changed, and it evolves. It's a living, breathing document. So you'll be part of that process next year. So for us, learning is lifelong. Um, I know I learn something at Condi Park every single week, if not every single day. Um, <laughs> so today we did some workshops on what Christmas is. Um, and I had the opportunity to work with uh, quite a large group of children. There ended up being nearly 20 children in my workshop. Um, and we talked about what Christmas means for me and my family and what it means them with their families everyone had the opportunity to share and some children um, they choose not to celebrate Christmas and other children do we had a conversation of what Santa looks like at your house so at my house he's got stubbies and, and shorts and thongs and a slouch hat um, in other families they have a very traditional Europeans looking Santa um, so everyone it's about the opportunity to celebrate what's different but also to celebrate how we're the same as well. So play is the way for us all to connect. Play gives every child the opportunity to take ownership of and interest in their own learning experiences. Every piece of research document you pick up about early childhood development will start with play is the foundation to their learning. We need to stop pushing our children to move away from play. So it builds those constructive dispositions. So what we mean by that is when they're ready to move into prep, that they have a really positive sense of what learning is all about, that they feel successful, that they know they can take risks, not just physical risks, but intellectual risks as well. So if they get a question wrong, it's not the end of the world. They can cope with it, that's okay. Um, that's why play is just so, so very important. 
So our environments at Condi, we have our three classrooms, um, but your child's not allocated to a classroom anymore. Your child's allocated to a teacher and a teaching group like the seahorse or the dolphin or the starfish, but our environments are set up that we have a sensory space a space where children, which is a little bit quieter, that children can come and jump into one of the pods. Uh, other children may like to work in one or two uh, children groups as they explore a small world. Um, other children are just happy to come and have some relaxation and do some yoga on the mat. Our next room, our dolphin room, is our creative arts room. So that room is just jammed, packed, <laughs> full of all different creative arts experiences. So one of our team members, Elsa, is a qualified potter. So she actually um, has provided us with a potting wheel. So children learn how to throw and centre clay and then learn the skills of how to manipulate that particular resource and um, to create what they want based on their ideas. So as we start to move into Christmas and the knowledge of Christmas again, uh, we're starting to talk about what Christmas trees look like. So a Christmas tree in Australia looks incredibly different to a Christmas tree that Miss Ellen might have seen in Scotland um, or that Miss Bonnie might see in the UK. Or um, It's sharing our knowledges and our experiences. And then in our final room, in our starfish room, that room's our construction space. So you can see the two centre photos there, that there's lots of different construction. But it's not always with man-made materials as well. Uh, we could be using construction out of natural timbers or sticks or logs. Um, there's always something different in that space as we move along. So ladies, did you have anything you wanted to share? Ellen? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, I'll be in the sensory room mainly. That will be my allocated sort of room uh, that I oversee, but of course all throughout the centre. So in the sensory retreat, we aim to provide children with the opportunity to actually fulfil their sensory needs. So if they're overstimulated or maybe understimulated, we can actually provide um, opportunities to use like a Swiss ball or some heavy lifting opportunities to actually give them that sensory feedback that does help to calm and recenter the children and then we will have some quiet activities as well before they actually go and want to engage somewhere else so I'm very excited about that and working with our OT as well and everyone else. So Gillian in our art. So yes so the art space is um, the middle room and it is quite a large space and just um, reiterating that art isn't just painting and drawing it's so much more as we've got all spaces set up where the children can actually move different items to different places or they can bring things from home so let's start collecting all your useful boxes etc um, but that will you know we might set up a little um, little African animals and things and so that will be the inspiration for the children to draw or paint that area or there might be an interest in for example now an interest in Christmas okay so what's Christmas Kathy's talked about that so they might want to draw Santa or draw or paint a tree so we won't paint that for them they might ask how we do it and we'll show them how we do it but that's not right or wrong anyways right or wrong but they get all that pre um, writing skills in when they're doing all the paint, all that fine motor, the drawing, the pen grip. We will scribe alongside the children so when they're telling a story about their painting or their creation we scribe if they choose to allow us. It's their work so we're not going to write on it without their permission. Um, and then that sometimes the bigger things will just have a photo and the photo will go in their folio because they can't be kept you can't take them home because your car's too small <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is a busy space and children come and go but they also will take their arts outside as well if they want to go paint a tree or draw a tree or so it is a flexible the whole center is a flexible space yeah and then christy and bonnie share the starfish room hi 
Um, oh, you have yeah. to which way? Thank you. We should sit together. <laughs> so I suppose for the construction room, um, so far, so far, I'm just loving seeing how much time they have to create and how they're using the problem solving and trial and error to engage, and they can come back numerous times throughout the day and leave it there. Um, children are really respecting each other's creations as well and it's not being touched throughout the day. We had um, a group of probably five and others coming in and out the other week and they recreated a picture of a town that was on the wall with and had to use different types of blocks to make points and they made tunnels and cars and it was just amazing. And the way that they worked together to do that um, so the communication of the negotiating and it's, um, yeah, next to nothing. You can't make that happen without that time and space for them to create. Um, yeah, I can give an example as well, but the block building um, where children are bringing in their, um, their home information um, and then using that in the spaces. So they're building tents and uh, campfires and then with the building, there's a lot of mathematical thinking, a lot of numeracy happening. So it's really good, it's really exciting. And that, that respect that um, all the teachers talked about is uh, crucial across our kindergartens. So that we respect the work of our peers and each other, that we um, don't knock down anyone else's work or touch someone else's work without their permission. Um, and they have the opportunity to come back and forth to that. So um, that they may step away from it for a few days or even a week, but they develop new skills or different knowledge and they'll come back and that will change and it will evolve their particular creation. So it gives children that ability to not only focus and to follow through, but that attention to detail. Also, environments outside, um, please old clothes, hey, really old clothes. <laughs> Your children will go home and they will be covered in mud or dirt or glue or paint or <laughs> all of those yeah, all together. <laughs> So um, we don't mind what your children wear to kindy as long as it's some um, safe. Um, so they do, they will get very messy and dirty, um, as you can see by the bottom right hand side of the mud patch. <laughs> so uh, we do utilise loose parts in our space. So you can see in the sandpit, one of our dads, who's a local plumber, brought in lots of all cuts for us um, that we're always creating. We've got a few new donations in the truck department, which is always greatly appreciated. Um, but then there's ropes and there's pulleys and the hammocks are a real um, beautiful space where children can actually get away by themselves or you'll find three or four children in a hammock sometimes um, or we'll often find someone has gone to sleep in a hammock, <laughs> uh, which is a really nice place to be. Hopefully it's none of my teachers. So, <laughs> so yeah, our environments are that third teacher. So you're their first teacher. You know your child best. You will always know your child best. And we respect that. That's why we want to work together. Um, and then we've got uh, the teaching side there and then our environment informs the potential of those children. So that sense of agency that you can do it attitude is just crucial. When your child has that attitude, prep will come easy. Academics always come. They always develop that ability to work in groups, those abilities to turn take, to negotiate, to listen to another person's point of view, especially when it's different from yours. Um, there's some adults who ch challenge with that still. Um, they're those essential elements that we need to build and to ensure that a child has a really positive sense of self, um, that they are important. Um, and that they have knowledge to share. So of course, there's always a few bumps in the road uh, because that's the only way you can learn <laughs> um, is by having disagreements and having uh, altercations, I suppose, in, in some way. Um, but we use our bucket filling with our children. So our bucket filling books, there's a couple of different books. They're just two of them there. And there's a great YouTube 
quite a few YouTube clips as well if you want to have a look alongside your child as they're getting ready to come to kindy. But everyone has um, an emotional bucket. And the goal for kindy is that we have nice full buckets, especially when we're ready to go home, but throughout the day that we fill up each other's buckets. And what we say and what we do fills up not only our own, but each other's buckets. But it also works the other way. Sometimes what we say or what we do can sometimes dip into a person's bucket. So if that happens, then we need to have a conversation. And we need to look at what's happened. You know, what can we do differently? How can we fill that person's bucket back up again? Or how can we fill our own bucket back up again? Because if you dip in someone else's bucket, it dips in yours as well. Um, so we don't use time out at Condi or anything like that. What we do is develop that sense of responsibility that I keep coming back to, that sense of respect, um, and that everyone has the right to be heard and the right to be respected. So they are some great texts that we use. So in the morning when you come to kindy, what you'll face is you'll come through the starfish room and you'll sign in. So that middle photo with the red iPad is your first point of call. So it's really important that you sign in every morning when you come in um, and that every parent has their own individual PIN number or every person who drops a child off or collects a child has to have their own individual number. We can't share those numbers for legal reasons. Um, with your childcare subsidy, it actually is linked to that. So you, it's really important you have individual numbers. We'll help you set those up on those first few days that you come into us. So after you've signed in, then you're gonna go outside pop your lunchbox into a fridge. So again, we ask you to let your child or encourage your child to do those jobs. Uh, because if you put your child's bag away and you put your child's lunch away, we've got 75 children here every day. They're gonna have no idea where it is. <laughs> so that's why the child has that responsibility with your support, of course, to unpack their bag, to put their lunchbox away in the fridge to put their drink bottle over on the table or in the fridge if they like it cold and then to choose whatever locker they like and put their bags away. So when they take their shoes off at kindy, our language is, they're your responsibility, put them in your bag. So they have, they learn that responsibility right from the beginning. So I know in your handbooks it talks about providing sunscreen, but we've actually made a decision to provide sunscreen from the centre. Unless, of course, your child has a specific sunscreen that they need, please provide that then if they have allergies or intolerances. But other than that, we provide sunscreen. So we ask you to pop some sunscreen on if you haven't done so at home. And then you'll sign into your workshops. So the workshops are sometimes out the front which is where that table is, or sometimes they might be down in the seahorse room. Um, so you'll see that as you come through the door and we'll let you know where they are. So we encourage you to go down and read with your child about what workshops are happening for the day. And then they can make a choice. What do they want to do? What workshop is of interest to them? So uh, children make those choices that their responsibility, that responsible for those choices. So when that workshop time comes up, the teachers move around the service, letting the children know um, and reading their names off the list. And each child has a responsibility to attend that workshop if they put their name down. So that's probably the most important ones as you come in first thing in the morning. In the afternoons, when you come to collect, as I said, there's documentation everywhere. So you'll see uh, in the middle top photo that there's these large portfolio books which have the documentation for that day or that week of what's happening in that space. So it might be a project that grows over a few weeks. It might be an interest for an individual child that we've popped in there um, or it could be a small group that they're working on. There's also the outside programming uh, wall that's down the bottom there. We're actually in the process of moving that into a portfolio book. And then as I said, there's individual portfolios in each room. So the children can carry those across all their rooms. 
but that's just where they put them back to. There's photos there so they know where to find their portfolio um, and it also helps you when you want to find your portfolio. Um, and again, please feel free to review that with your child when you've got some time. Um, take it home with you on the weekend. We just ask you to take care of it because it's a really precious document. The photo of the clipboard there is where we highlight when children eat. So at Condi, again, we encourage them to listen to their bodies, to know what those signals are, um, so that they come and eat morning tea when they're hungry. And we highlight their name on that list there, which is kept on the kitchen cupboard, uh, which you can see in the bottom left photo. If they haven't eaten by about 10, 10.30, we'll go remind them because sometimes you get busy and you play and you forget to eat. <laughs> so they are reminded to come and sit down now. It's time to have something to eat to fuel your body, to keep that energy going. And especially at the moment, you drink lots and lots of water. And then we also highlight there for lunchtime when they've eaten their lunch, because after lunch, we ask them to reapply their sunscreen. So we highlight their name that they eat um, their lunch and then that children go over to the sunscreen space and they tick their name off. So they're learning to recognize their name. And by this time of year, they're writing their names um, for many children. So they need to put their sunscreen on, tick off. Yep, I'm ready to go and start my day at my afternoon. And if they haven't eaten by about 12.30, then we'll go remind them once again. So there's a few things also that you won't see at Condi Park. So stencils and prefabricated, I call it craft, it's not art. Um, so it certainly has its place, just not at kindy. So there are things like we um, stencil drawings to create an image, or you walk in, um, you won't walk in and see 10 reindeer all looking the same because that's craft, it's not art. It's not learning that skill and expressing that individual thought. So celebration days like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter, Christmas, all those sorts of things are individual for your child. Some children love to make gifts and that, that's okay, we'll support them in developing that. Other children may choose not to and we'll also respect that point of view as well. We're not going to make gifts that um, come from us you don't want a gift from us you want a gift for your child you want your child's voice you want your child's representation so that's what you'll get at Condi Park those drill techniques in terms of sound and letters and shapes and numbers we don't use drill techniques we use it in play so we use a technique called cued articulation with speech development so that's uh, where you can google that particular um, name cued articulation and you'll see that it's combined sound and where that sound comes from in your mouth or in your uh, your nose or your throat to produce that sound so it's something that children pick up incredibly quickly uh, as we encourage children to maintain their home language and then to learn English as a second language um, so we often learn um, quite a few languages at Condi Park as we progress through our time together. Um, and in no small way, the bachelor language is incorporated into our everyday as well. And then those set time frames. So as Christy pointed out, we don't stop children constantly to eat or stop them to change environment or stop them uh, to do other things that are in our adult imposed world. What we do do is expect them to be responsible. We'll remind them if they haven't eaten. Uh, they have the opportunity to leave things and come back to them. Um, that they have the opportunity to really explore and develop that focus and attentioning, um, which is what a lot of teachers talk about when they move into more formal schooling, that they need to have that attention. So if you stop stopping them, they develop their attention. So all those things that you will see at Condi, you'll see beautiful quality art materials. Um, we're very fortunate being community-based, not-for-profit. Our money is there to buy beautiful materials for our children to use and quality art materials that 
that work. Um, there's nothing worse if you're trying to paint and the bristles of your brush are coming out or the paint quality is washed out and watery looking. To create what you want, you need quality art materials. You will have lots of pieces to take home. Um, as uh, one of the teachers said, you may not fit them in your car, you'll have so many quality pieces to take home. <laughs> um, even a squiggle on a page. So there's always a story behind the children's work and we share that with you. Games, songs, writing alongside of our children's, recordings of their voices. They're all those different ways that we document. Um, we play so many games and we're often singing. We may sing instructions to our children uh, because that musical intelligence is a, a great way to learn. And finally, that curriculum that we spoke about earlier, um, that curriculum gives the responsibility to each child to follow their values, to follow their plans, to be accountable for their day, and to most importantly, listen to their bodies and know what it's telling them. As that, that develops a strong sense of well-being, a strong agency. So we use the QKLG to document, as I've said, each teacher and educator observes tracks and then in consultation with you sets goals so every term we set goals for our children so you'll set your own goals we'll ask you to tell us what what's your goal for your child this term um, and then we encourage our children to set goals so in term one a lot of the goals tend to focus on monkey bars and getting across the monkey bars <laughs> um, and then we talk about what a goal is and how we can achieve those goals. So uh, they tend to be very physical things in term one and by term two, children have developed a strong understanding of what that goal is. Um, and a lot of them start to talk about where they want to learn how to write their name. Um, or they may want to learn how to uh, centre a piece of clay on the potting wheel. So there's lots of opportunity to set their goals and then we reflect back on those alongside the child. Remember what we talked about? How are we going to set, how are we going to achieve that goal? And then as experienced early childhood teachers and educators, we plan an environment that supports but extends your child's learning. Whilst um, by what we provide and how we communicate to children. Each portfolio of child children is individualised. No two ever look the same. That's evidence um, of the learning that takes place at kindy. Conversations, listening, observing are all important aspects of teaching and learning. So you might come in and see that we're sitting in the middle of the mud patch. <laughs> um, but we're not just sitting, we'll be listening, we'll be talking, we'll be negotiating. Or sometimes we'll sit, we'll sit really quietly and try not intrude on their children's work. It's important to know when to step in and when to step back. Sleep, rest, relaxation, whatever you want to call it, um, that can be a contentious issue with children at this age because it's really important as adults that we get our rest. <laughs> um, and it's really important that children um, at this stage, because they're growing so, so much and so quickly, they need to have their rest. They need to have their relaxation. But it's going to look different for every single child. So Ellen's Seahorse Room is going to provide the opportunity for children. Some children might want a bed and that's okay. Other children, as I said, might come and do some yoga quietly on the mat or other children may actually just come and sit peacefully, play an individual game, read a story, just have that opportunity to recharge. Our goal is to have children when they go on to school or more formal schooling to go from playground that really busy active um, noisy space and then to be able to come into a classroom and to be able to focus to use those relaxation techniques and to be able to engage and that takes time to learn so the national quality framework is a really important component of early childhood education in Australia. So it's broken into seven quality areas. 
Condi Park um, continues to be seen as exceeding those national standards and um, celebrating the excellence that we provide within our service. Um, you will be, you'll hear a lot of conversation about the National Quality Framework in your time with us um, and some of your reading and you'll also see a lot of it online as well. So it's a, it's a really important tool that we use across the whole profession to ensure that there are those minimum standards, but we don't want to be minimum, we want to be exceeding. So Condi Park has a real, a very, very strong connection to our community to evolve to meet those changing needs. That's why we never ever look at the same from one year to another, um, like some of those influences from the AEDC data. So when we get those through, unfortunately, we don't tend to get them till sort of October, November of the year that they're collected. That informs our decision making and, and what we should be focusing on as well. Condi Park, look, Condi Park has a really high adult to child ratio. So again, we don't meet minimum standards. We're um, quite a lot higher than that with our ratios and also our qualifications. We're incredibly lucky to have such talented and experienced and knowledgeable team members that all work together for the benefit of your child. We really empower our children. We expect them to make choices. We support them to solve problems and we see every single child as confident and capable in their own right. We do play a leadership role within uh, the educational community, but also the Harvey Bay community. So um, that means that I'm out and about a bit. I often talk at different conferences, um, but we advocate very strongly for children and for families within our community. And that's something um, that you will see and hear quite a lot about. And most importantly, families. Families are really crucial to providing an engaging and effective curriculum. You are your child's first teacher. We love you to be involved. We also respect your really busy people. So your involvement can be um, that you provide resources. You know, you might collect boxes or containers or um, you use materials to share with us. You may like to jump in and join us on the management committee, or you may be somewhere in the between of that. So you decide what's going to work with you first, but always feel free to come and hang out come and read a story um, or come play with us at Beach Gindy. So we believe in your child. They are capable, they are competent and all children deserve access to high quality education. So teachers, what, what's our job? So our job uh, is to develop a relationship with you and your child. Our job is to provide an environment that evolves and changes to meet those individual needs of those children. It never stays the same, it always changes. It's to document alongside your child, share their story, share their development, um, and to support the ongoing learning. We utilise our teachers' toolkits to support individual learning, our group conversations, our games, our songs, our music, all those things. To scaffold children's learning, to extend their knowledge, to research alongside of our children, um, and to hypothesise. So we aren't here to fill them with knowledge. We're here to enjoy, to journey alongside them and to go, well, what if? What's that provocation? Um, yeah, and to encourage children to take chances, measured risks, and most importantly, persist, give it a go. If you get it wrong, it's not the end of the world, it's okay. So that brings us to Beach Kindy. So Beach Kindy is a really important component of our teaching at Condi. Beach Kindy happens every uh, year between terms two and three. There's no extra cost or anything like that. We get to learn to work, work together get onto a bus out the front of the kindy, to go down to Gadiga's End and to engage in that natural sight. Um, we see a really different type of child when they're outside those fences. We see different groupings of children. Children work with different groups. Uh, we also see that real in inquisitive mind come alive. We also learn how to take care of each other. We also learn what we do at kindy and what we do at home 
affects those waterways and affects those plants and animals that call that place home. So at Beach Kindy, there is no swimming. We do have the agreement that will go to our ankles with our children, uh, which means they'll go to their knees. Um, and every single child, as you'll see in those photos, has reef shoes on. So reef shoes are a core component, a core piece of equipment when you come to Beach Kindy. Even if you come down to the beach, we encourage you to wear reef shoes too. Um, otherwise, to get across those rocks is really quite dangerous without them. The children learn really quickly. Their centre of gravity is a lot lower than ours and they move really quickly across those rocks. If you try to do the same or we try to do the same, then we tend to end up on our bottoms. Um, so we encourage you to wear reef shoes and, of course, hats and sunscreens. So as I said, children connect in different groups. We inform language acquisition. So the language of the different animals and plants that we might work with our local marine biologists or uh, different habitat groups or our bachelor um, groups that come and work with us at the beach. To develop that language acquisition is quite tricky, but children pick it up really, really, very, uh, very quickly. There are no fences, so children generally don't push those boundaries there. Uh, as a teacher, if you've got a child running away from you, then you need to stop and think about what you're doing uh, because you're not meeting that needs of that child. Um, they react very differently uh, with us as they will with you as mum and dad. So I know my children behave beautifully at school. <laughs> at home, they might push my buttons a little bit more. So that's just normal. That's, that's normal child development responsibility that word keeps coming up and concrete understanding of what we do at kindy really informs and impacts on those waterways so that's where children develop a real sense of ownership and respect for those environments so kindy is a place to develop a love of learning to encourage all our families to be involved as you wish to be and it's about working together because the benefits of early childhood education ensures that your child has a really successful start to their more formal schooling years. So welcome to Condi Park. That's probably about us in a nutshell. Um, if you have any other questions whatsoever, please feel free to email us, call us. We encourage you to come for lots of visits before now and the end of the year. You don't need to make an appointment. Pop in any time. Um, that's it. So thank you so much for making the time this evening. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to working with you and your child very soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. See ya.